In this new series, once a month, I'm going to be going over what are the best things that I've listened to, read, or watched. So you can kind of have a list of where to start when you need fresh ideas of kind of what's going on and what you can learn from next. All right, so let's start with books. I'll be honest, I had some big reading goals at the beginning of the year, as everybody does with New Year's resolutions and goals, and I'm already way off track, but here's what I've got going so far. This book right here, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, this, you can tell I'm still kind of reading through the book, I'm not there yet, but this book has been, it's one of those ones right off the bat, I knew I was connecting with it. There was something about it where I just, each page kind of through the first two sections were just wildly connecting to either things I'm thinking or processing and going on in my own personal life because I'm somebody that I've actually for some time thought I don't really have limiting beliefs. And this one will show you that no matter where you are at in life, no matter how successful or powerful you think you are, or how few limiting beliefs you think you have, this one will help you figure out actually you still have a ceiling that you need to break through and it goes through how to do it. Can't tell you quite how to do it yet because I haven't finished it, but I honestly believe I'm far enough into it that I can absolutely recommend it. And it's something that most people I think should read. And guess what? It's really short. It's not a long book at all, which is great for me in order for me to catch up with my goal. Next up, we've got Hidden Potential by Adam Grant. And Adam Grant has really become one of my favorite authors, kind of very similar to Malcolm Gladwell. I had to known who he was before, but I listened to an interview with him and Malcolm Gladwell and Brene Brown. And that's where I really started to adopt what I like about his writing and his thinking. He's an organizational psychologist, which I just finish a master's degree in organizational psychology. So maybe there's a little bit there that I've bonded on to him. But this book, Hidden Potential, is very connected to me because it's about finding the things in people that are in the unordinary, right? So the people that you wouldn't necessarily think would be successful in certain fields, like people that couldn't get through like uh, high school math, but then became statisticians or mathematicians later on solving major problems, things like that, where you're not predefined by the things in life that happen early on and that there's actually specific steps you can take to change those things. Think about The Knight's Tale, uh, the movie The Knight's Tale with Heath Ledger, you know, a couple decades ago at this point, where it was all about, nope, you're in, you're born into one thing and that's it for the rest of your life and he has to go change his stars. It's kind of the same idea that you can get into one track, but you can also break out of that track. Now, this one's kind of ironic, though, because I started listening to it on audiobook uh, because I do really enjoy audiobooks. However, in one of the first chapters, he actually talks about a study that shows you really do retain more when you read a physical book versus an audiobook even though some people say, oh no, this is my strength or whatnot, that there's actually studies that show that's not true. So I found that one really interesting. So I actually went out, bought the physical book. Highly, highly recommend this one. All right, for what I'm watching, I'm not necessarily talking about what movies I'm consuming, although we went down the path of watching the original 1993 Jurassic Park the other day, and absolutely you should do that if you haven't in a long time. But that's not the point. I'm talking more about what are we learning from watching, whether it's TED Talks or documentaries. And in this case, it this is kind of a cross between two where it was both entertainment and documentary, but it's a new crime series, which I never watch crime series. I don't watch crime docs really on Netflix. I'm just not into them except for this one. It's American Nightmare on Netflix. It just came out this month. It's short, which is nice. It's only, I think, three episodes long, so you're looking at maybe four or five hours. It's not one of the really long, drawn-out ones. Like, Tiger King was great. It was just incredibly long. However, this one's pretty short. Uh, if you're in Northern California, it very much hits home because it's uh, something that happened here. I really don't even want to talk about what it is because... There are so many twists in the story that happened. It only happened a few years ago, several years ago at this point. And it's a true story, and it is just wild. It's something that, again, just kind of take my word for it if you're bored and you just want to watch something and maybe you're not necessarily looking at learning but you don't want to necessarily indulge in a movie there's your option go check out american nightmare on netflix and then last but not least let's talk about what i'm listening to in this case we're going to talk about podcasts and 
my idea for this was to have like, what's like that one episode this month that was just so good. You have to listen to it. But there's one catch at the beginning of the year is that a lot of the times the podcasts are doing kind of recaps of last year or their goals for this year if they're productivity based or business based podcast. So I wouldn't say that there's any one that I was like, oh, my goodness, you have to go listen to this. So instead, I want to give these are like the three podcasts right now that when there's a new episode, I listen like plain and simple. I don't skip past it. That used to be the Tim Ferriss show or Joe Rogan for me. And those have just kind of kind of moved on in a way it's not really saying anything other than I've really enjoyed these other three all right so for this first one I get it I'm with Keller Williams you might say that I'm a little biased right now I'm fine with that but it's the millionaire real estate agent podcast hosted by Jason Abrams and really honestly some of the episodes that have come up I've said oh I know who this person is I've heard their story before kind of I don't need to hear this again and every episode so far, I've been blown away, and it's actually made me want to listen to every single one that comes out. Uh, a couple episodes that come to mind, uh, Caroline Huo, that's a great one, and she's local to here, so I know her story really well, but there was a very distilled information about how she runs her business. Ken Pozek about how he's building his business on YouTube, that one is very tactical and goes into here's what to go do to build a YouTube channel. And then another one that stood out was uh, Sarah Reynolds building just a massive business out on uh, starting or hubbed on the East Coast. Her episode was also very good. Those are three of them, but honestly, any of the 12 or so episodes are just absolutely fantastic. The second one that I listen to every single episode when it comes out is My First Million with Sean Purry and Sam Parr. It is kind of a break from real estate, but it's still business related in there's so much like creative juice that comes out of these episodes, right? They'll have full episodes where they're just brainstorming business ideas. And what I like to do is kind of sit there and think, okay, how can I take that business idea and apply it to somewhere in our real estate business? And we've come up with some kind of crazy ideas through that. They're also very good at interviewing guests and they bring on guests that are fairly popular, but also ones that have really interesting backstories. And that's kind of what I was saying before about kind of just not listening as much to Tim Ferriss or Joe Rogan anymore as I used to, because really a lot of those guests tend to be the same on those bigger shows. But then on this show, they're really digging in and finding some very interesting guests to interview. And then the third one that I've listened to every single episode that's come out for several months at this point is the Colin and Samir show. This is all about content creation. And and specifically, they do a lot of content creation on YouTube, but really they're talking about any platform on the internet where people are creating and consuming content. So out of these three recommendations, I have one that's very real estate specific, and then I have one that's very just business specific, and then one that's actually content creation specific. So you can kind of see almost like the three different places that my mind is right now in what I'm consuming. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this month's little new episode of what I'm consuming this month. So let me know in the comments below, one, do you like these recommendations or which ones are you most excited to kind of go listen to? or read. And then also let me know what were the best things that you read, listened to, or watch in the month of January. And I'll talk to you soon.